Here we are. Episode 94 in the bag. Robbie C, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. Y'all, uh, we are here. I am so excited. Um, I feel like we have officially arrived as a I, podcast. I, uh, I do too. Thanks do to too. a amazing listener. I have his screen name pulled up in front of me. If I was better at this, I would have pulled up uh, like his actual Nathan. His uh, Nathan. Nathan. Okay, perfect. Uh, so um, Nathan Howitz. Yeah. Nathan N S A J K O W I C Z 25. Jackowitz. Yeah. 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 So Jackowitz, um, I think. Sorry, so Nathan. the positives are Nathan uh, invited me to collab on this like post and I accepted. So it's also on my uh, Instagram as well. If you want to go find it and you don't mm-hmm. want to type that in. Um, but Nathan made a in the bag Diet Coke drinking edition uh, bingo board. And y'all, I don't I know about not you. Thirsty. Brad, That's all I got to say. I was cackling as I was reading this oh, thing. Me too. I I audibly laughed when I was reading it. It was very funny. Because it's it's one of those things of like I did public speaking as a youth pastor, I did public speaking for several years. Um and this is something that like you don't realize what your quips are until you go back and watch yourself. Mm-hmm. And there are so many things on here that I just look at and go do we do, do we really do that episode every episode? And then I think through it and go, Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Uh, we, we certainly do. Uh, so it didn't rain today. Nope. Which means that space on the bingo board is not going to be hit, but I've got my diet Coke ready and I've got it pulled up on the side and Brad and I are going to do our darndest to make sure that we don't hit any yeah. other squares on it i hope no one's thirsty yeah better not be thirsty because you're not drinking your diet coke here yeah that's why brad opened up the episode <laughs> so exactly ha, ha, ha. It, was, it was too tempting i just i had to take it away from yeah him. that's right that's right that's when your kids can't walk away from it just yeah so we have an episode a great episode planned uh brad tried out some phenomenal discs that can't wait to tell you about um one of them i even like i threw out like this would be amazing because nate talks it up all the time all Mm -hmm. of the liberty uh like um guys talk it up and i just honestly i haven't thrown one Mm -hmm. so i was hopeful y'all would have it so really cool that you did um but looking forward to looking forward to this episode a newer player been playing for less than six months uh Mm -hmm. and has some really cool i can't wait to ask him about the art on his discs yeah they look pretty insane um yeah i mean I was excited to throw these discs as well. Just, I mean, they're ones I've thrown before, which I've thrown both before, which almost never happens on these episodes. But I feel like I have new perspective on both of these discs. Mm. So it was nice. And I'm, I was kind of looking at it in a different way. And hey, by the way, um, shout out to all of you that jumped on the live that I did. I actually went live on our Instagram. If you're not following in the bag Instagram, you can see in the, the notes below in the description um there's a, we it was a party we hung out quite a few people we're asked we're uh talking we're asking some questions and y'all got to pick some of my lines that i threw and tested with the discs and it was a lot of fun so i hope um more of you follow the in the bag instagram i'll try to do that every week that i throw um again i got in the field and throw by myself which is fun but it was way more fun this morning with everybody there and yeah. you also got a little sneak peek in the episode you all got got to know as much as i do which is hey We're going to throw these discs side by side, make mental notes on them. And that's what I know. And that's what you know. But hey, you have the teaser of these are the discs we're throwing this week, which I thought was very cool. So make sure you follow the In The Bag Instagram and I'm going to try to go live. And it was a a blast. Uh, So thank you to all of you that um, showed up. I love it. I love it. Well, with all that being said, let's bring Elisha into the end of the show. Welcome into the podcast, Elisha. How are you doing today, sir? Very good. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on here. I was surprised to get the the message to ask you to be on being so new. So I'm super stoked to be on here and hopefully learn some more from you guys. I think it's great. I think it's great for a newer player to be on again. I think we've done pretty good about spreading it amongst everybody, but you know, having yeah. a newer player on, you know, a non pandemic player for instance is really nice to see. Cause you're, you know, 
you are now like kind of the after wave of that and people that are coming on board afterward and that end of the sport is growing too. So it's good to see like a continuation. There isn't just a, like this slope off yeah. of yeah. COVID golfers. So it's really good to have you on. Um, love your bag. I mean, just, just saw it a little bit ago. We'll get into it here in a minute, but uh, some very creative artwork on there that Robbie was pointing out, which is awesome, which is why I love Disc RPM. We get to see that stuff. Uh, also great note taker, it looks like. So those are always encouraged uh, during the episodes. But, you know, before we dive in your bag, Robbie, let's go ahead and get to know Elisha a little bit more and uh, take them through our normal questions. Yeah. And that's one thing I want to point out is that, like, for those of you who are wondering how do we get on the show, things like that, Elisha, newer player, uh, but submitted all of his info in Disc RPM. He even, like, filled out the distances he's throwing, mm -hmm. put some notes in there, all that. The more information that y'all are willing to put in Disc RPM, I literally was scrolling through our In the Bag community and your art on your discs jumped out to me, Elisha. And I was like, okay, curious. So I'll go <laughs> and look at it. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, I like legit see a spot where I think we can help Elisha out. Uh, and so then I reach out and I had all this information. So because I had all that, it makes the ask super easy. So mm -hmm. if y'all are, you are the inspiration Elisha for others, hopefully that like, if you are in, not in the disc RPM community or you like just threw your stuff in and you put a bunch of stock pictures, the more info you give us, the better shot you got of getting through the curtain. So, um, Elisha, you've been playing for a short little time. How long have you been playing? Yeah, I started in September. I've got a couple of buddies who, uh, started playing two years ago and, uh, I'm active duty military. So I was stationed in Hawaii. Uh, they're friends from Texas. And so when they told me they started playing and said, said, man, you're going to love this game. Like, I can't wait till y'all get back. So we moved back in September and literally the first weekend I was back, they had me on the course. So they, they hooked me up wow. with some, some, uh, a judge, some, an EMAC truth, the fuse and a saint that we uh, affectionately refer to as Val Kilmer. And, uh, those, uh, <laughs> they're, they were all really well beat in and knowing what I know now is perfect for a beginner that I didn't have to spend any money at all. I got to jump on the course right away. And for the first few months, kind of feel my way in. Oh, and there were also two sets of Franklin beginners. So those were awesome. I was bombing 150 foot albatross shots. Those first there couple of albatross. Yeah. <laughs> I, when I switch around my bag, so I had a distance driver slot that I was looking for and like the flippy side because uh, a friend of mine, Dakota, ripped my really flippy Raider straight into a lake. Um, unfortunate, but I had to replace it. Uh, and I didn't have any other Raiders that seasoned yet because I just put them in the bag. So I ended up going to a different mold for that slot. Thankfully, that Raider has now been retrieved. Uh, Zach is bringing it to Birmingham this weekend. Oh. Um, but I legitimately, Elisha, almost put the Albatross in there <laughs> because every time I do a Franklin disc challenge and I pull that Albatross out, I'm like, this disc is so good, dude. Uh, like people can say all they want about this set. The <laughs> albatross is fire. I got an eagle with an albatross at a course, uh, Hobbs farm over in Georgia. Um, Unbelievable. like it's, it's so good, dude. Um, so I'm with you on that. Okay. So Elisha, let's talk like we put you in an open field, mm -hmm. uh, and we said basket's going to be X amount of feet away from you. How far do you feel like you can consistently reach that basket on a forehand and a backhand? Right. So on the backhand, I feel like I'm up to right now, I'm up to uh, 230 to 250, like where I feel like I can put that in the circle if it's an open shot. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and then forehand, I, I'm probably throwing less than 24 hands, to be honest, like in, in okay. the six months I've been playing and, uh, we've been talking about an all four hand, forehand round, but like we only play basically weekly. We have Sunday games that we play every week with a group of friends and every now and then we get an extra round in, but our rounds are so, are time is so valuable. I don't think any of us are brave enough to really do the forehand round. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. I, hear that. I would say one of the, like the best ways to like sneaky work it in is forehand approaches. Mm. So start with, it's not an all forehand round, but like no matter what you got to throw a forehand approach, mm -hmm. uh, because that's for lots of people who have a wor not a, a worse, who don't have a fully developed forehand, mm -hmm. uh, is the best way to put it approaches or where they're going to be using it the most anyways. Mm. So it gives you that taste and that practice on how to use it effectively. And then you don't have to sacrifice the whole round and get frustrated to, you can just do approaches, things like that. Yeah, that makes so. sense. That'd be less intimidating too. So yeah. Yeah. Much shorter. Uh, so I love that. That's awesome. Uh, we put you on the putting green mm -hmm. and we're like, all right, 
you got 10 putts from 15 feet, 10 putts from 25, and 10 putts from 40 feet. How many are you making at each station? So I'm probably making 14 out of, or excuse me, 14 out of 10. No, I'm making 9 out of 10 wow. <laughs> from 15 <laughs> feet, right? Like uh, I'm hitting those really consistently. Uh, when I first started, I did, uh, there's a disc golf course on base. So I would go to, at lunch, I'd go to one of the baskets and just throw putts. And so, so mm. I feel like that 15 uh, foot distance, I'm, I'm pretty solid at. I will mentally you know, go somewhere and miss one every now and then, um, from the 25, I'm six out of 10 probably. And, okay. and the last time I did the, the UDS practice putting and I was doing that, like that's pretty consistently where I was. And then from 40, I'm, I'm bombing them. So if I have 10 at the same disc and I get to throw them, I'll probably dial in a couple, but if yeah. I have a 40 foot putt, I I'm probably laying up to be honest right now on the course to save a stroke. And yeah. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah. I respect that a lot. Um, so would you say that putting is the strength of your game or what would you say is the strength of your game? Uh, I say the strength of the game is I can get it into the circle, like uh, not off the drive. Obviously I don't have that kind of distance, but, but as I come in, I can get it into the circle. So I don't have too many 30. I haven't had very many 30 foot, 40 foot putts to be honest uh, when I'm out there on the course. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm excited to look at some of the discs you have in your bag to help you with that okay, cool. um, mm-hmm. and talk about that. Uh, seeing that strength the one one of the things that's intrigued me so heavily for your bag is your rhino collection yeah. so i am <laughs> like i cannot wait to get to that uh-huh. uh but we're actually we're going to be recommending a putter today okay so uh i don't want to uh, we're actually going to start on the top end of the bag okay. and work our way down if that works for you yeah. um <clears throat> especially at like a 230 250 foot range I am, I'm curious about the top end of this bag for Mm -hmm. sure. Um, I'm seeing a big, you seem to be a big Innova factory second guy. Yeah. And, uh, when I started, so again, they hooked me up with those discs and, uh, and they were, they were mine, they were giving them to me, but, uh, but I, I wanted to build my own bag and I wanted to be able to give those, this back for the next new person, you know, cause I thought that was Mm -hmm. so cool. And, And I wanted to be able to you know, pay that forward and be able to handle this to the next people. So as I went to build my own bag, I actually watched one, watched one of your videos, Robbie, about how to buy discs because that I wanted to respect the community and make sure that I was doing things the right way. And so you introduced the, the F2 Fridays, right? And so if you yeah. look, I've got 12, I think 12 end of a disc ish. I've gotten three batches of F2 Fridays, you know? And so okay. I that way and I joined in September. So by the time I was building my bag, it was around November. December. So I was fortunate in that, that the black Friday timing. So, so I've been, it. Mm-hmm. I've got a, I feel like I got a decent starters bag and like uh, some premium plastic and, and probably paying on average 10, 10 to $12 a disc, you know? So, which I think yeah. I'm really appreciative of your, your video. Cause it, it, uh, it helped me save money. And then that makes, makes it easier for my wife to allow me to play the sport. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so, yeah, so I'm in a heavy, but that's be, uh, because of the F2, F2 thing. Right. And then you mentioned the artwork, like one of my first discs I bought myself on a black Friday was that buzz, the white one and it was reverse, yeah. reverse stamp. So I was super excited that I get to do something to it. And then, uh, mm-hmm. and so with the F2s, like it's kind of guilt free wiping the stamps and, and getting at it with the art. I love it. Your, I mean, your art is so fun. Uh, like it's so you just using a sharpie on them. Yeah, and drawing. Yeah, I watched YouTube videos and Google like uh, how to stamp and all that kind of stuff. And like when when I tried to imagine how I would do it, the um, making a stencil to me with the the stuff I wanted to do was going to be way too intricate, and it was going to be way simpler to just to just sharpie it. And so. I goofed around, experimented a little bit. Um, the artwork is sumo fish. I have to, it's not mine, right? I have to be clear. I don't sell it. I don't, it's for my own thing. Cause I love it. I love their stuff. Um, I'm from Hawaii, grew up in Hawaii. And so their, their art has a lot of uh, Hawaii ties to it. So that, that, uh, that first one I did, it's a spam musubi shark, right? It's super cool. And like, uh, awesome. yeah. And so I literally like printed out the size I wanted for people that are, that are trying to do Sharpie thing and aren't artists, like, or, yeah. or kind of OCD like me, you, I printed it, taped it to it grab the fresh Sharpie and like trace, trace, trace. And then I went in and cleaned it up. Right. And like, so that worked for me and the champion disc, I could literally trace through the, through the bottom of the disc. I taped it up on the bottom and it's traced it out. So for those that aren't artistic or, or don't want to risk ruining a disc, like, uh, it's, it's an effective method to, to put your own artwork that you want on a disc. Yeah. Dude, that's, 
that is awesome. Amazing. Very, uh, very cool. and very creative. Uh, I don't know. So this is this is a fun thing from like a you're new to the game. Uh, Kona Panis is yeah. a pro player. <laughs> uh, I don't know how familiar you are with Kona. Um, she was really popular a couple of years ago and uh, has had some sickness issues. And so she hasn't been like a dominant face mm. in uh, the game for a little bit. So a newer player like yourself, I don't. Yeah. Uh, but Kona, actually, one of the things she used to do for like fundraising is when she rolled into town, people would drop this off for her and she would do commissioned artwork with Sharpies. Wow. Like four people's discs mm -hmm. uh so when i think of like sharpie drawing on discs kona is one of the first people i go to because she used to do these i mean she was the one holding like 16 different colored sharpies and she's drawing like landscapes wow. and all that it was sick yeah and my buddy andy my best friend andy he's crazy he does these, these really silly like incredible like art on the disc They're like i'm just too ocd to like just freehand and go for it like i, I want i need everything mm -hmm. laid out and I couldn't find a yeah. medium to do a sketch or a rough thing on it. So that's why I went with the trace thing because it just felt safer. But Andy, Andy throws down some amazing, hilarious art on discs. Yeah. I love it. I'll have to get the, uh, the art style you were talking about. I'll have to get that from yeah. you in a message afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at it. It's incredible. Yeah, they do t-shirts and, like, and um, pins so and stickers. And, and in fact, my water bottle I got, that's on my, uh, it's on my yeah. Roadrunner, I think. So yeah, they do really dope yeah. stuff. Yeah. You'll love it, Robbie. Like, yeah, I'm so, just, I mean, I'm the just samurai on your rhino looks so cool. Yeah, I got two uh, of them, right? Like, this is the yeah, one's a, one's a rice bowl fish and one's an octopus. Yeah, super cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. sumo yeah, fish. The one I was, I was hoping there was a hammerhead shark, and they uh, have one. And oh, oh you went in there. Brad's already the bought it. Uh, Sweet, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at. I'm just looking at their decal, like their sticker yeah. section. It is insane. Really yeah, cool. I stuff. need like all of this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well. Let's dive into the disc, shall we, gentlemen? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we unfortunately, we do, as part of the podcast, have to talk about <laughs> disc golf a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, okay. I'm enjoying well, this already, Elisha. Uh, thank you. Uh, we like when a guest, when we can just kind of vibe with a guest, always makes the conversation a little easier. So let's talk about this construct to start. Yeah. Because you've got four discs chilling at the nine speed realm. Mm -hmm. And then we drop down to fairways or drop real down to fairways. So the construct what's how's it flying for you yeah so the construct uh that came from my buddy andy and then uh so andy and josh are the guys that hooked me up and man construct stamps are like the coolest stamps ever like every construct disc i've seen i'm like wow like that's so cool but uh he gave me this uh, he, he's from out of town and then he's in texas but farther away so whenever he comes into town he's super generous with things like a stack of discs and i was like hit him up guys and, like most of them are drivers and I, i'm aware i'm trying not to i don't have arm speed and i'm trying not to fall into the the speed, the, the speed trap. So that's why I, yeah. I cap out at like nine ten, And then, uh, so the construct for me flies very straight and then it's got a little finish. And, uh, what it's really good for is headwind, which is, I get maybe odd mm. cause it's not overstable, but, but it throws into the wind amazingly. So anytime I'm, I'm on the tee box and, the, and I got the wind in my face, I'm always pulling it out. Like, and I can count mm. on it to get the distance that I expect to, to drive. When I think about Hawaii, I, I've never been to Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, but when I think about disc golf in Hawaii, <clears throat> I I would imagine because of it being island, that the wind feels pretty squirrely at all times. Do y'all have like calm days in golf or are you just kind of used to it at this point? So it's hard to think about. I'm actually in Texas, right? Like we moved back to Texas and like I, oh, I almost okay. regret that like when they didn't, when they told me first off that they started playing, that I didn't start playing in Hawaii. They didn't go find a starter set and go play it because there's probably some beautiful courses up there, you know, like, but mm -hmm. I'm out in West yeah. Texas and, and, uh, but yes, the wind in Hawaii has got to be squarely all the time. Like I can't think of calm days, but, uh, but out here too, like we're out in West Texas, we're border desert, you know. So like the, um, we we do have some calm days, but we do play with the wind a lot. So it's it's okay. one of those things you can't be like, oh, it's windy, I'm not gonna play today. Like then you're probably not gonna yeah. play. Yeah. The the windiest round I've ever played was in Texas. Okay. <laughs> uh, I literally watched two trees get ripped out of the ground oh while we were playing, uh, and uh, it was in the middle of a tournament. And so like we round the front nine, and the TDs like y'all are playing kind of slow. You need to step it up. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him and I was like, I need you to not talk to me right now. Mm -hmm. uh, like I need you to walk away from me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, and I'm like, <laughs> bro, 
I literally just watched a tree get ripped out of the ground. We are fighting for our lives out here. (laughs) Do not talk to me about slow play right now. Get out of the way. And we are the last card. How do you even Uh, putt on a day like that? I can't imagine. uh, You don't. You, you, you hope and pray. (laughs) I had a putt. It was like a long par four. And I had a putt for the par that was like eight feet away. Just long enough that like, I actually have to putt it Uh a little bit. Like I can't just. Yeah. Even with my six foot three arms, mm. like I can't lean in and drop it. And I hit the chains and I was too high in the chains. And so even though it hit full dead center, the wind just pushes it out. And now I'm 200 feet behind me because it just shoo, yeah. takes off. Yeah. yeah. You don't. Uh, 19 over par was like a 970 rated round. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was insane. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, Sorry. Sorry, I got passionate the about the wind. Uh, <laughs> back to the disc. Back to the disc. So the Valkyrie. Yes. I love the Valkyrie. I think the Valkyrie is a phenomenal disc. Mm-hmm. Uh, how's the Valkyrie fly for you, especially Champ Plastic? Yeah. It, it, uh, so that was one of the first drivers I got on like the F2 thing. And so like it, it was for a while, it was definitely the disc I could throw the furthest. And it, and it has a serious overstable uh, thing to it. So so I was definitely like in, in the on my hit point, like making sure my hit point was out in front of me or even a little right so that I could get it out and then have it swing back in. But but uh, for until I picked up the Roadrunner, it, it was my pretty much my go to driver, like besides headwind. Yeah. Okay. Um so let's talk about the Roadrunners yeah. then. Uh let's uh you got two Roadrunners in the bag. Mm-hmm. How are they flying? Yeah, and so the the Roadrunner, this is the first one I had, and then and then I ended up buying a second one on the, the next time I went uh, uh, F2 Friday. And this was one of the, the later discs I added because uh, I, I was kind of going overstable. Some of the stuff I read and, and listened to earlier kind of implied that, oh, you should learn how to shape your shots, and you should play so overstable discs, and, you know, like, don't don't be a wimp. And so, like, and then, and then yeah. I listened to some of y'all stuff, and then and, and this, this, this uh, in the bag, and, and the especially the the way that the app displays your discs and you kind of see the holes and it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't have anything understable. So, so Roadrunner, Roadrunner was the free disc for F2 Friday one time. And I'm like, cool. Like I, oh. I can give that thing a shot, you know, and, and got the other things that I was eyeballing. And then, uh, so initially it definitely flew super straight for me, like a little right start and then a nice gentle fade. And so it quickly became my go-to uh, driver and then uh, lately, I guess as I'm progressing, right, and and every now and then I'll, I'll I guess I just get everything right timing wise and, and snap, and then it uh, it'll take off right, like not it won't flip over and die, but it'll it'll just go right and stay right. And I'm like, wow, like mm. so I've, mm-hmm. I think I've only thrown one shot that I'm aware of that was over 300, and it, and it was with this guy that I ripped, and he just took off right, like. I think I ended up bogeying or double bogeying the hole, but because <laughs> I was so far right. But uh, but it, it uh, so I think my arm speed is starting to catch up a little bit. I, I'm guessing I'm around a six or seven, and every now and then I nail the nine, and then so it, it does that. But but for me now, it's still the one I trust the most. You guys talk about the psychological, you know, like knowing. Mm-hmm. So when I grab pull that out, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna throw this thing straight, you know. I love that. And so the other one is just kind of there. Yeah. As, in case background. something ever happens to the yeah, pink one. I love it so much. So I'm like, man, if I ever lose it or if, uh, or, or if it really does start to get super flipped before me, then, then maybe I can, I, I know it's in, it's in a premium plastic, but then maybe I can rotate it or whatever if I need to. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, uh, I totally get that. Caught myself, uh, bingo carters, uh, because I, the, um, like I bag three pigs and one of them flies eerily similar to my wizard. But the reason that I have both in the bag is because I know there are some shots that I can throw that pig on and it's going to fly great. But, uh, I also like, in case I lose my overstable one, I have to have it. And I realized that I dodged one and walked right into another bingo slot. So I was just touche, texting Nathan. you. Uh, I was just, I was just texting you. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, we're, we're still going to get as few as possible. We're okay? still going to dive in. I'm sorry. I'm, you got me, Nathan, you got me pinned. Um, let's talk fair or let's talk those seven speeds. You got the T-Bird and the Leopard three. Yeah. Can I ask a question about nine speeds? Real yeah. quick oh, go for it. Seven? Sorry. sorry. We kind of skipped over the Lariat a little yeah. bit. 
Um, how does the Lariat, I guess, does the Lariat kind of run into that other Roadrunner that's your backup as far as like going very straight for you and then like a, a very gentle fade? So, or what does the Lariat do that's different than your like newer Roadrunner? Right. So I had a, a oh man, I forget which disc it was. Another, I think it was like a 12 speed Lone Star that uh, I found. And then I texted the guy right. and he was like, keep it. I sold that thing a long time ago. And I'm like, it's yours. I'm like, sweet. So, so I just had it every now and then I would try to throw it. And then I locked, we were playing in a horrible course that I never want to play again. And then it runs along the river and I lost it. And, but I was okay with it. Cause I'm like, cool. That's, that's why I threw it. Cause it was, I was okay losing it. And my buddy felt Josh felt, I think he felt bad that he, he had us playing there. And so he bought me this to, but in a, in a speed that I, I appreciate. And so last yeah. week was my first time throwing it. And uh, I was surprised like, cause it's a negative one, one but it did want to go right a lot more, like more than my roadrunners and my roadrunners are negative four. So like, um, and they're both speed nine, but, um, so I've only thrown it. I threw it off the tee every hole pretty much because it's my first time with the disc and I'm, I'm just going to drive with this all day and see what it does. And, uh, mm-hmm. and it did fly pretty straight, but it, it, it did also want to go right. Uh, especially initially more than I expected, uh, based on the numbers, mm-hmm. but it was a little windy too. So that could have played into it. Um, I, I need to get more, more reps on it, but I'm sorry, Brad, I don't like, I don't have a real good feel for this thing yet, but yeah. So I think it's fine. And again, there's, there's, it's perfectly reasonable to have discs that are new in your bag. Mm-hmm. And you're like, these, these could have a slot. They make sense to have a slot in my bag, but I've got to just get used to them before. Right. Um, I really know how well they fit. And I, I think it's perfectly normal. I mean, I have discs in my bag like that. I think Robbie, at any given time you're testing, I mean, I think anyone who's playing often enough that you're like really trying to hone in your bag, you've got to have discs like that in your bag that are, they're like, I know they serve a purpose. Mm-hmm. I'm just not sure which one it is yet. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, Hey, I need this gap. It makes sense to be in my bag. So yeah. my, let's just keep it in there and let it sit and settle. Yeah. And my thinking is as my arm speed increases and as I start, my form tightens up that my road runners will start going more right. And that this will become mm-hmm. my, straight driver is, is yeah. where, where my brain is we'll see if that's what happens yeah. but yeah yeah you you know why it's in your bag you know yeah. why it's supposed to be in that slot it's just a matter of like you know again you're you're growing you're learning so mm-hmm. it'll like i said it'll settle in a little bit and if sorry you're, if you're not a disc cycler like mm-hmm. if you're not going for mold minimalization the moment you lose one it's like okay do i uh, exactly what you've done here yeah do you want to put another bayonet in or do you want to go with the lariat and like yeah test to see is this going to do the same thing but better kind of a deal and you don't know until you leave it in there for a little bit like yeah yeah. i mean we talked about it last week i'm pulling stings pretty much out of my bag Mm -hmm. and i'm trying to shift stalkers down and i just don't know like if that's how the makeup of the bag will actually settle but i'm never going to know that unless i play with it for a little while so Yeah. yeah uh there's a difference between just like throwing a random disc in your bag and like, I don't know why it's right. in there. Then like, Hey, I'm trying to figure out this, yeah. this opening. Yeah. Here. I like y'all's um, I've learned from y'all. Like, I hope it shows in my bag that I tried to build my bag based off the philosophies that you guys show and, and a, a well rounded bag for the most part. So like, yeah. I, am I will, I would way. say, yeah. Yeah. I would say there's no like huge gaping holes in your bag. I think there's just some like additions that you can make in there that are just maybe like give you a little extra shot selection. Right as you're progressing, as you're learning. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for what we recommended today. I think it's really going to add something to your bag for sure. Yeah. Again, yeah. I don't think you're like missing it per se, but it'll definitely add. I yeah. do say, I have to say jumping down to your seven speeds. I do kind of love both ends of your seven speeds. Mm. If I'm being honest. Bam. Yeah. Very well balanced. Uh, so let's, let's talk about them. Mm-hmm. What the difference is on the world, especially I'm curious on that leopard three, when are you going to it versus, the Roadrunner. Yeah. Well, oh, versus the Roadrunner. So the Roadrunner I'm using off the tee. And then, uh, like I said, it's my main driver. And like, if I've got the second shot is over 200 something, then I'm, I'm, I might pull the Roadrunner again. You know, like if I'm going to throw, okay. if I got to go through 220, 230 again, then I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll pull the Roadrunner out. But if it's 200, like, I feel like I can throw the Leopard 3 200. I'm going to land that guy. You know, like I'm going to have a, tap tap input like (laughs) maybe not every time but i feel that way i feel that confident when i grab this guy like he flies super straight for me and and um, i just love this disc like i'm super stoked that i picked it up yeah i think that uh, the halo leopard 3 has been a addition that i've made recently to my bag and yours looks like it's halo as well um i think it has a very unique combination of like it's still like it'll turn for me it'll turn 
but at the very end it'll fade yeah just a, a tiny bit and i do feel like i can throw it very hard very far and it does it does like just fly really nice so i'll be interested at, again as you progress to see what if that turns into again i think your bag is going to shift so mm -hmm. your halo leopard 3 will kind of shift right on you a little bit your t-bird's going to shift a little right yeah. And you may be like, okay, now it's time to add something a little more overstable. But I think where you're at right now seems pretty awesome. Is there a reason you don't throw your Leopard 3 off the tee? No, no. Uh, and honestly, like, because of, uh, I'm, I'm loving how I throw it on those on those shots that I have been thinking about, like, oh, maybe, maybe in these next couple rounds, like honestly, like, honestly, this week, I was like, hey, I might throw this off the tee this week, like, just to get more reps in on it because I just really enjoy it. We do have a hole that has, like, a really tricky – on our main course that was a really tricky like you have to forehand is the way to play it right Cause you have to kind of go left or around these trees and then ideally you kind of curve it back left a little bit mm -hmm. um to to have an approach at the at the uh pin and you can't it's hard to bail out right and go around there's water and stuff and so like the when i get a little bit of annie on my road runner or a little bit of annie on this i've done it a couple of times where it's just beautiful and, and does that perfect line through it and mm -hmm. so, and this one is actually the best one I've thrown in that hole. So yeah, I have been thinking about giving it a go, um, these next couple of weeks I off the tee. Yeah. I would encourage you. I think that's a great shot. Once you really get the feel for throwing it off the tee, I would encourage you to find a shot that's just like kind of open mm -hmm. and you just need to just go as far as you can straight and just try it on that sort of shot. On that, the slight really just, I would just. Whatever your natural oh. throw mm -hmm. is, are you more a hyzer or anheiser? Or I think I'm a slight hyzer. Yeah, hyzer to flat. Yeah, okay. I would say just like let her fly on a, a hole that there's like not a lot of consequence for, mm -hmm. just to get a full like feel for what does this look like if I just throw my normal shot? I need to go as far as I can. Mm -hmm. There's no danger. Let's just see how it flies. And correct me if I'm wrong, Robbie, but I I feel like that's when I get the best feel for what a disc really can do. Yeah. And then I can start kind of being like, okay, well, if I manipulate the angle a little bit, maybe I can get it to do this for this hole or, you know what I mean? Is that like the right approach, Robbie? Or do you think there's a, like a better approach for that? No, I, I think that throwing discs in a flat open field lets you get a real good insight for it to see how they're just flying with no interruption right. and no manipulation. And then like Brad said, like you're going to walk up and you're going to be like, oh, this looks pretty close to what that leopard three was doing mm -hmm. uh, i will tell you right off the bat just in your drivers because we want to jump down to the mids now yeah. but like the if i were you going another round of like f2 like drivers and whatnot i would grab a star valkyrie or a g star valkyrie and i would definitely grab a star leopard three and a G star leopard three, um, mm -hmm. like the Valkyrie, maybe not so much because if you go too straight of a Valkyrie, you may end up like pushing the Lariat just straight out of your bag. Mm -hmm. Um, but halo is obviously going and for most all of Innova halo star is going to be their most overstable plastic oh, option okay. possible. Mm -hmm. The only mold that's coming to mind right off the bat that that's not true for is turns. Mm -hmm. Um, halo turns are just as flippy as regular star turns. Um, the champion turns are the most overstable, but it just depends on which one you get there. Uh, but like halo leopard threes are overstable leopard threes. Mm. So, and I wouldn't even suggest getting a champion leopard three because those are also like a champion leopard three is why I hate the leopard. Three oh, okay. Because I bought one and I was like, this is a freaking T-bird. Uh, mm -hmm. like they flew shot for shot the exact same. Um, so I think a star leopard three would actually give you those options. And what Brad's talking about of, I think your road runner should be nervous. Yeah. A star leopard three, I'd be willing to bet you will see minimal difference between a star leopard three and your white road runner. Mm -hmm. you know, just straight out the box. Uh, so just, just some options there. Let's talk about the buzzes. Yeah. Um, the buzzes down to the stingray. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, the, so, yeah, the buzzes, and then this is one of the first things I picked up, like I said, and, uh, and this is a ESP one. And so like I, what I've done lately is I actually took the big Z. I love the big Z so much. I love throwing it. It feels really good. It, it, it does exactly what I hope it does. And it skips beautifully at the end usually. So I can like, like a Mario golf, how you do the little, like, you know, you're approaching, you have a roll into the hole, like on the mm -hmm. chips. Like I feel like I do that with my buzz. Like it, it, it hits and skips right up under there. And so like, nice. uh, 
I love this so much. I stopped throwing the ESP and then I was like, no, wait a minute. I'm going to take, I'm actually going to take as much as it hurts. The big Z out of my bag, throw the ESP. Cause I think this one will be, um, if I'm not wrong, this one will beat in quicker. And then, so this will eventually maybe become something that I can do a little bit more left to right stuff with. And then I can put this one back in my bag as my straight shot guy. So that's where my brain is. And, and, uh, yeah, anything, 100 to 170, I feel like if I got the buzz, I can put that thing in the circle. Like I'm confident that I'll be able to do that. And then, uh, and then I picked up the, again, this is when I started picking up understable stuff. So when I picked up the leopard three and, and the, I picked up this guy as well, the stingray and like, it's so light. So I didn't have, it's 148. Like I didn't, this is my only light disc. And like, uh, it was shocking when I threw it, I was like, I don't know what to do. And so I tried the Heiser flip thing and, and, I did have an approach shot with a tree in front of me that I needed to go hard left to right. Uh, my right to left was not an option really. And so I pulled it out and, and it was about 140, 150 feet and, and threw it flat and hard. And it beautifully did the, the curve around and parked. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, that's what it's for. Mm-hmm. But there's been some shorter shots where I've tried to finesse it left to right. And it, and it acts like a stable, stable or overstable. Uh, I guess I'm not giving it enough speed, even though it's a, or I guess I'm not giving enough spin or speed to make it do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So the nose angle is what's probably getting you there Mm -hmm. is because you're like, when people try to throw annies, like short touch annies, Mm -hmm. they usually end up pulling them high. Okay. And so we like fall right back into the shot. And when you do that, you end up releasing it like back here by your left shoulder rather than more towards your front shoulder. And when you do that, it's slipping out. And so it's just sailing nose up. Yeah. And so the wind is more so having its way with that. Got it. Okay. Um, if you uh, try to think, have you, ever, do you ever play baseball? No, I mean, yeah, not much at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you just think about the concept of like swinging a baseball bat right. rather than going for like the full power swing, mm-hmm. if you were just standing up front and your chest was like somewhat forward facing and you just boom swing the hand right when you're throwing those finesse touch shots don't do a run-up at all right yeah just stand there and just throw the hand right first and see if that works for you to help solve that issue because like i said most of the time where people lose it is they do like a full spin and then they drop it back here by this shoulder rather than sending it out in front of them committing to the shot on anheuser's is one of the hardest right things to do and like the uh, I love the last two sixty four guys, Jonathan and those guys. Like they're hilarious. Like the videos are so good. And like he had mm-hmm. one where I forget the the guy's name, but the the older guy. The, and he had one where he talked about turning the key and then make the paint the rainbow. And like the when I saw that video, and like one of my first couple of rounds, I had a shot where I needed to go left or right hard, and I did that thing. And my all the guys were like, "Wow!" And it's like, "Yeah, paint the rainbow, turn the key." But it's kind of an extreme <laughs> version of it. So I know there's like yeah. the in between version, and that's where I'm trying to learn. And I'm, you're probably right. You're probably nailing me on on the uh, the release point and stuff. So yeah, just tr- like you said, commit and trust the swing. That's yeah. what I kind of love about like. Uh a really understable disc and especially a really underst- light understable disc like that is it really does for me in my game personally, it's really made me conscientious of like, I, I reference like shot power and percentages all the time, hmm. but like those 40, 50% shots, like I, it's made me like really, it, you focus on your form a lot when you do those kind of shots. It's really a, a touchy shot, which, you know, is kind of, it's kind of hard. Yeah. It's kind of hard to, to, and I'm still working on those, but we're getting there. But I love that you have the stinger in there for that reason. Yeah. So let's talk approaches. You've got two discs in the bag that are arguably some of the best discs in disc golf. <laughs> one of the most perfect molds that's ever been created, yes. but we're not going to talk about those. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the culprit. What's the culprit do for you? Yeah. So the culprit is, and again, it, it was a black Friday deal. And, uh, like I said, my buddy took me up with judges. So they had a, I, they had like a, if you get a team stamp one, you can get another like premium one for, for cheap. So, so I got a judge cause I thought that's what I wanted. And then, uh, and the culprit was the team stamp one I went with cause it was a really overstable mid. I just had that gap in my bag at the time and, uh, it's beefy and it's very overstable. So it, it definitely, uh, hooks around. So if I need to go around anything with a hard, uh, right to left, mm. it's what I pull out of the bag and it, and it does it. Like I, I, I'm very confident on what it can do. The one thing I'm, 
not in love with with it is is it's a, a two on the glide and it, it definitely feels like a two or a one on the glide like i, I wish mm-hmm. i could get it to go further and do it you know what i mean like like i feel like i know where i can make it do exactly what i want and lay up but uh but if out further where I, sometimes where i'd want that shot i'm like man I, I don't think i can get this this to go there it's not going to glide there like it's going to die on me yeah, yeah. Do you ever jump to your, t- like in that instance hmm. where you're like, man, I need a culprit shot, yeah. but the culprit won't get there. Do you ever jump to your T-bird when you're like consciously thinking about that? No. And, and that's something I've been thinking about. Cause that, to me, that's, that's another hole I might have in my bag. It's like something, a glidey mid range overstable thing that I can, and I've been researching and reading and like, I, I thinking maybe I might try the rock three, you know, on the next, next step two thing, like maybe try something like that. But, uh, hmm. But I have been thinking, I'm like, man, I need to do that. I need to grab the, yeah, we didn't really talk about it, but yeah, the T-Bird, I have the OG T-Bird is Domi, but it, uh, it, it's very overstable. So yeah, I'm thinking about doing that, like pulling that out and trying to give it, I might even do it where I would normally do the culprit just to get some reps in on the T-Bird and see what it does. Yeah. And if your buddy, if, if your group that you play with is like, you know, I know you said your time is very valuable. You don't get to play a lot, mm-hmm. but you know, just taking anytime you throw your culprit, throw your t-bird yeah. and vice versa just to kind of see the difference i mean the big thing that that you're going to want like a four or five speed to do versus like your t-bird is like four or five speed is not going to have like that ground flare right you're, it's going to like kind of stick now an overstable mid-range will have some skip but maybe not as much as your t-bird again mm-hmm. and also like um our speed matching a little bit better so i'm not saying like it's a solution but it would just be interesting for you as an experiment to just like okay I want to throw the culprit here. I know I can't throw it as far as I need to. So let's throw the culprit for my real shot. And then player two is going to throw the T bird and just to see how that works. Yeah. So yeah. that might be another interesting experiment. Like have your leopard three, throw your leopard three off the T more. Yeah. And then maybe throw your, switch in and out your T bird and culprit. And that'll really probably give you the feel for both ends hmm. of your game. Like kind of that straight to understable and then like your overstable. And again, maybe help you with some shot selection. Yeah, I dig that. No, definitely. I, I appreciate that advice. And and my, my guys are cool. We play casual rounds and when we need to, we'll throw another disc or, you know, try things out. Everybody's real cool about that. Yeah. The, the comments may roast me for this. <laughs> Good preface. I know. Uh, the mint by clash. Uh-huh. When you're talking about an overstable approach disc that has some glide to it, the mint, like I've been, while y'all were talking, I was trying to think of like some options because I have literally a whole rack. Uh, one of my Heiser disc racks downstairs is just all over stable approach mm. this. Um, and there's not any of the greatest disc even on that specific rack. Mm-hmm. Uh, like mm-hmm. those are all in their own box. Um, so the mint really is what I'm like coming to for that. Um, another one, if you like staying in the trilogy world, is actually the Cenus. Not like it's an older mold, but they actually re-released them. Like it feels like a couple months ago, uh, mm. Brad. I, I mean, I know y'all had yeah. them. Uh, yeah, we still have them. What is it? Um, the what? The See, it looks like sinus. Oh, it looks yeah, like it looks sinus. like sinus. Okay. Uh, but it has these like three little... Uh, you're you're a thumb track guy. Yeah. I can see based on the bag. And so the Cenus, it doesn't have thumb tracks, but it has grip like pads. pads. Huh. Yeah. Very unique, but everyone looks at it and thinks that it's like a really straight disc. Um, but it's not, it's an overstable okay. approach disc. I, I was thinking quake Robbie. Yeah. If you want to go to the more like over, if you want to go to the more mid range style, I was trying to stay in the like putting like approach first, yeah. I got category you. with the mint, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I, the quake great option. The rock, if the rock three, isn't it the rock X three definitely is. Oh, okay. Um, so when I was on team Innova, that was my, like, I had rock threes up to a point and then I had a rock X three for that, like overstable. And then I jumped all the way up to a gator. Um, yeah, I feel like that, that kind of area, there's a lot of options. Yeah, yeah for sure. Even in Innova, they have a lot of options. Yeah. The gator that came in the rock X three, the Toro, the, like there are. And once again, if you're rocking F two Fridays, like, Right. That's the way to go. If you Try watch long enough, I feel like they throw the Rock X3 in there once a month. Yeah. Yeah. As, as because I don't know why one. nobody throws the Rock X3. Right. Uh, but like as the free one, you have to watch for a month and you'll see a pop up. Right. Uh, so on the most beautiful disc ever, do they just fly like shorter versions of your buzzes? 
Yeah, yeah, it's like straight. They have a, a nice, you know, dependable fade at the end, and then so like I love it. I, the way you were talking about it, just trusting your throw, just throw your hand out, and you know what I mean, like a standstill, throw my hand out. I know, I know my aim point. I'm confident that you know, like it's gonna, it's gonna park. And and I've yeah. thrown some spike hyzers too. We have a hole with like a tennis court fence where the drive usually ends up in a little corner, and then you you either have to throw a pretty mean left to right, or you have the option of spike hyzering over it. And I've thrown that disc up at the bacon up and over and it just slams down like almost in the basket a couple of times. So uh, yeah, it's, it's very, obviously I got it off of your recommendation. That's why I bagged them. And then, yeah, I love it. It's a very reliable disc. I know I can, what it's going to do. That disc is love. That disc is life. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. So let's, let's talk about the rhinos. We're going to, we're going to plow through the rhinos and then Brad, we're going to jump into recommendations. Yeah. That sound like a plan. Absolutely. So you have four. Yeah. Are you putting with rhinos? Yeah. So that's what I, uh, you know, Mad it's man. funny, I like it. out in the world, like there's so little, there's so little stuff on putting putters. Everybody talks about approach putters. There's lots of information and maybe because it's so personal, but like I had a really hard time finding, finding, uh, people like really strong recommendations on putting putters. And I try to pay attention to what people are throwing. Uh, my buddy throws wizards and, and they're amazing. And like, but I found that out after I'd already purchased these. So, so I decided mm -hmm. after thinking about it and then the thumb track and the B like the, um, the judge, I did like the judge it was beaded. It was, you know, it was big. And so like it, mm -hmm. it, with the F2 Friday thing, it seems smart. And so I grabbed it in three plastics and, and was throwing all three of them, like trying to put three times every time and practice. And the, I love the art, the art of plastic felt best in the hand of the three. And then it started kind of taking off on me. Like it started, I, I was missing high mm -hmm. consistently and it is lighter. So it could have been that it's a 163 versus 170s, 175s on the others. And so it could have been that it was just lighter and then I was starting to high, but it kept happening to the point where I was uncomfortable aiming low. And then the champion mm -hmm. was more consistent for me. Like for me, it, it, it hit, hit, hit. And again, the plastic feels good in the champion for me, it, it grips. Mm -hmm. And so it hit. And so on one of the, the last FP Friday things, I got the second one. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm an, I'm a champion rhino putter, you know, like that's what I'm going to do. And so, yeah. So I went with it. I, I sold it. I, I just went for it cause I couldn't yeah. find good information to help me out, but I, I feel good about it. I, I feel like I put pretty well. It's funny. It's like, tell me you put in a lot of wind without telling me, telling me you put in a lot right. of wind. Because like, <laughs> you're going to make sure, Hey, those things aren't going anywhere. They're going to like, yeah. it's like a putting with a brick. Yeah. Yeah, my I from 2018 to 2020, I putted with star AVR threes. Mm -hmm. So team premium plastic gank. Mm -hmm. I'm with you uh, on that. Mm -hmm. Also, one of the most dominant performances in putting that I've ever seen against the bogey bros was a guy putting with uh, like Z fierces or something like that. Like it was something right. we right. saw him yeah. kept putting with it over and over again. And at one point it was like some weird like off stance he had. And we thought, oh, well, he just went to that one because it was a weird one. So he had to throw it more. Nope. Uh, dude was just lighting it up. They shot like yeah. 16 down uh, with him putting with premium plastic. Yeah. So and I, I, nothing wrong there. Right. And I will say, do you the, throw them? I not, not, uh, not very much. I do every now and then. Like I've had some really good throws at the DX on approaches that like when I, when I'll try the pig, I'll throw the the i'll throw it twice and then and then i'll throw the dx rhino and it's actually kind of flown well so it's, it's starting mm -hmm. to take that uh i do kind of throw it on approach i'm not throwing any putters off track off the pad at all because uh none of our holes are under 250 around here like you know what i mean like and so with my distance you know i'm not i'm not throwing putters off the pad so i the dx one i actually pull out more for i have been pulling out more for approaches it's a that's one where i have to make a mental decision am i going to throw the I'm going to throw the greatest hits of all time or I'm going to throw the DX, uh, Rhino. And then, so there is a decision point sometimes on those and it might just be how I'm feeling or, or what I remember seeing myself do with those. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will make not a, not necessarily a hot take, but just, I almost guarantee you, you can throw a putter 250 feet. Yeah. Hey, maybe not a Rhino, but <laughs> not a Rhino. Yeah. Not a Rhino. Yeah. Yeah. If you found but... the right, if you found the right one, <laughs> the I right putter. You. Yeah. Right. And I will say what I like about the right, you talked about it, like it's a brick and like, I like that because it forces me to commit to my putt. Right. And it makes me mm -hmm. throw it. Like yep. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm in between, I find myself keep finding myself falling in between a push and a spin putt. And then, so I'm trying to be, I'm more successful when I spin putt. And so I'm trying to 
it makes me throw it, throw it at the chains, like hit, hit the shot. And with wind, it helps, right? If, if you're in that mentality, then hit, hit the chains. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, recommendations today I'm excited about because I think they're going to be a nice compliment to your rhino and really your stingray, if I'm being honest, mm-hmm. if you think, Robbie, it's going to kind of just like, I don't think it's going to cause any confusion because, again, your bag is laid out pretty, like there's a lot of thought. There's not like, you, for the space you're in your game, there's not a bu- there's not like huge holes in it. There's just like, where do you go next? Like, where do you go right. next, in my opinion? So I, I'm excited about them. I, in fact, forgot that you're Stingray when I sent these suggestions to Brad yesterday. Because, uh, once again, Brad doesn't see these until this one. I literally <laughs> didn't send it to him until we had started recording. Uh, uh, yeah. So that is on me. But uh, I forgot that your Stingray is so light. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a very real chance, depending on which one we land here, that you would lean on this disc more than you, like you would stop throwing your stingray 90 percent of the time that you would normally throw the stingray mm-hmm. and you'd start throwing this disc more. Um, yeah, your stingray probably becomes more utility. Right. And you, again, you have comfortable comfortability with it, but it probably become more utility at that point. Because that lighter weight, the wind is really what. Yeah messes with the lighter weight the most so if you're playing in texas and yeah you're on some sunday where you're right. like ah I, we're gonna play but unfortunately we're playing 25 mile hour sustained winds yeah. like mm-hmm. that stingray is not getting thrown this might uh so brad what'd you throw all right so i threw two discs that i've thrown before like early on and one of them was actually in my back at one point um so kind of familiar but it's nice to throw them again again against head to head to one another so we got this beautiful 500 spectrum PA5. It's 175, mm. I believe. Yeah, 175. And I have the con man, Sean. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's also 175. Uh-huh. And it's funny, I didn't know this, but I intentionally went higher weight on both of these just based on my own personal experience. I had no idea the wind was going to be part of the conversation. Mm. Yeah. So very excited about both of those. And again, hey, uh, Elisha, we went, I went on Instagram Live and threw these live with some in the bad community folks today which i've never done before so mm. these discs were the first time we got to do that so they got to tell me some lines to throw gave me some feedback as well so this is not only feedback coming from me but also our community as well that joined me for the live so you're the first person to get that i'm very excited to say that yeah uh so brad let's talk about when you grab them uh the experience that you have uh i i have no comments at this time next question all right so when you took them out to a field and you threw them uh obviously the the spot that we're looking for here is that understable option because Mm -hmm. as someone who has taken an overstable disc similar to the rhino but without a bead and beaten one in to be very flippy Mm -hmm. while it is flippy I still would not describe it as the potential understability that this type of a disc can have. Mm -hmm. So did you find either of them to like, how did they rate on the understable scale? Um, I put them both in kind of the, you can grab them off the shelf and they're going to be understable category, but not so understable that a beginner is going to be like, it's going to be hazardous to a beginner, I guess. Because I think that's maybe the trick is I don't think any disc is like too flippy. You just have to know how to use it, right? Mm. So, and I think coming from personal experience, grabbing, like being like, okay, I started throwing very overstable. Obviously, that's not what I need to do. I need to try to throw stuff more neutral and understable. Um, so grabbing some very understable discs like the uplink. The uplink is very like touchy. So I wouldn't recommend that really for everybody out the gate. Um, so you have to kind of find that middle ground. And I would, I would argue that the Neo origin maybe starts off maybe a little like less understable than you want it to be. Cause you have to beat that into where it needs to be. Both of these discs off the shelf are going to give you, you can throw them 60, 70, even 80% power on a little bit of hyzer. And they're going to like flip up easy for you go really straight, but have that like turn the whole time hmm. that you want. Um, and I think that's really the shot that a lot of people want, right. but don't really know it until you see it. So I think on like under stability scale, Robbie, like if, if 10 is like extremely understable and one's like, like nuke OS, you know what I mean? Like I would say it's probably, I don't know, like a 7.5. Again, like you can throw it, you can throw, you can put some heat on it and it's going to turn, but it's not going to burn. Mm. Okay. 
That's and that's nice for a starting mm-hmm. option, and especially Brad sitting in that like three hundred feet of power range. So mm-hmm. he's going to get a little more movement out of these than Elisha is, and that's okay because the beautiful part about disc golf is that there is a disc for everyone, right? Um, mm-hmm. You just got to find it. So uh, talk about the lines that you threw at these. Okay, so I didn't throw any of these on like a lot of Annie on purpose. I threw I threw one on Annie and the people on the live got to see it. And like I throw in this field and there's like a, a road that goes beside it. And I was throwing into the field to the left and I turned it way over and it like went into the road. So if you give it some Andy on either one of these, discs, they're going to go <laughs> that you don't have to give them a lot of encouragement to go. Right. They want to go. Right. Um, so I did accidentally throw some Andy lines and it, it did exactly what I expected. It as much Andy as I gave it, it was like, Oh, more please. And just mm-hmm. like once the Andy, but we like um, that though, because yeah. I mean, that's, that's what the stingray on those shorter annies right not doing yeah exactly and like you know if i threw them straight like a little i i didn't throw them hard on purpose if i throw them hard that i'm going to turn them way more than i want to but 75 percent power just throwing them straight and hard i have like a baby hyzer if i think i'm throwing straight i'm either throwing a little hyzer or a little anhyzer mm-hmm. i'm not throwing straight um but they would go real straight and have that turn like just like at like 50 percent mark in the flight they're turning um, which is awesome. If I threw them on hyzer, again, real easy hyzer flip, especially the PA5. PA5 was so easy to hyzer flip, even if I threw it nose up or like I throw a nose up on it, I'm trying to fix that. But if I threw it two nose up and kind of skied it, the PA5 would still turn. Hmm. Whereas the the Shaman, there is a t- tipping point where I you know put the, gave it two nose up and it would have a little fade mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. So... And I said this in the live, I think what's cool about the Shaman, which is, I think why what's cool about it, but it's why I took it out of my bag, is um, there's a lot of shot availability with a Shaman. And I feel like you really, if you have good angle awareness and control, you have a lot of availability of shot types you can throw with it. Because mm. again, if you give it enough hyzer, it's not going to, it'll maybe flip up, but it's not going to turn. If you give it if you throw like purposely like floaty nose up shot, like you're trying to approach, then it's going to have some stability to it. Or if you want to give it a little, like a little extra ante, it's going to go, there's a lot of shots you can throw with it. But I think there's a danger to that shot availability for a beginner because it does allow some like room for error Mm -hmm. and maybe like shot confusion or shot selection confusion. And I think that's why I eventually took, took it out because I'm trying to like narrow that down to be a little more competitive. The PA five, um, was really interesting because I feel like this disc is meant to do one thing and that is do some sort of like turn, right. whether mm-hmm. it's a big anti turn shot or you're like hyzer flipping to go straight and turn. Um, and it's like, has that kind of effortless, you could probably, and I'm saying you as a, everybody that you could power down, whatever your uh, version of power down is a standstill, like flat shot. And there's probably a point where you can stand still throw it and it's going to turn right for you. There's also probably like a floaty approach nose up that can just go straight for you. Mm. So I really feel like there's nothing on the the turn or sorry, the fade plane or that left movement plane that you're really going to want to get out of this disc. Um, but I do think there's like, it's like, hey, I'm going to pull this disc out. I know I need to go right in some capacity. Mm. So that's what I'm going to do. So hopefully that made yeah. sense, Robbie. I would- yeah, no, I, I think it makes a ton of sense. And I I think about the person whose face is on that shaman and he is one of the people that I know the most who is like, I'm going to change my angle every single time that I throw the disc. Mm-hmm. Like Hunter and Trevor at this point have both leaned into. Hunter always throws on Heiser. Trevor always throws on Anheuser. Like mm-hmm. that's what they do. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Connor is the most inconsistent out of them. And I would say now I've not like, I'm saying it out loud helps me process it. But Connor feels like the most inconsistent. And it's not because he doesn't have the shot potential it's because he is throwing the least consistent shots over and over again. Mm-hmm. He's throwing the least amount of like the same shot over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, so Brad looking at Elisha's bag, is there one that kind of stands out to you for as sure. I would recommend for this sure. for sure? Um, I've got to re- recommend the PA five for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm doing that just because you've explained like kind of where you are, like how far, how long you've been playing and like kind of, your arm speed, your distance. And I think the PA five is going to get you into that realm easier. I think the Shaman might be a little frustrating for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you could throw it well. 
I just think it's going to take the learning curve is going to be higher than the PA5. And the PA5, you're just going to be able to, again, you can experiment with your power a little bit, but since you don't have a forehand, I think this is great for you because you're going to be able to really get that left to right movement pretty easy. You're probably going to be able to like learn hyzer flipping pretty easy with this disc and kind of feel what that's like. So I think there's a lot of like skills you can probably develop too, mm -hmm. along with it just being a good addition to the disc you have in your bag. Right. But I think there's some skills you can learn with it too. And, you know, we're a big fan here on like recommending multi-shot discs, not just like, hey, this is one utility shot that you need. So I think I think PA5 is winning for me. Okay. Uh, Elisha, how's that feel? Yeah. I've, and have you experienced Prodigy? I don't think I have. I don't think I've got anything in my bag, and, and I don't think I've thrown any Prodigy discs, to be honest. But the – and I'm not a – brand Brand doesn't matter to me, right? Like, I want something that, that works. It, I, I go you – know, because, again, because FT Friday is just a, a, such an affordable way to get good discs. But uh, yeah. the way the way ABB described it, the, the that it wants to go right, like that's beautiful. Because the courses we play, I've got some shots that I have to go left to right on, and and I again I got that Stingray hoping that it would do that for me. But again, because of the wind, because of the lightness of the disc, you know, I'm still feeling it out and figuring it out. But uh, and I'm playing with that either. I've even played with the idea. I, I'm curious what y'all think of, of developing a little bit of a left hand backhand for approach, like. I'm like, hey, maybe that's a better option than trying to figure out the forehand, like just for approach, like a controlled, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, to me. I would say both are going to require a similar amount of time mm. and effort. Mm. Uh, so it comes down to what your body can do. Right. Uh, I play with a friend. Uh, she does not throw forehands, right. but she throws both ways. Like her lefty backhand is just as good as her righty mm. backhand. And so it's super like, they're both like 300, 320 ish, mm -hmm. but the only time it really comes to like bite her is when she's in a, like stuck in a bush uh, and she can't like yeah. full Swing. reach out yeah, or something yeah. like that. That's where the forehand that slow, like that smaller arm movement really highlights it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think that it is a do or die type scenario so i mean eagle mcmahon i would say is pretty decent at frisbee mm -hmm. golf yeah and uh he's got the lefty dialed right so it's crazy uh, what he's doing yeah yeah so i think i to me dealer's choice mm -hmm. i i if i were to really pick i would do both mm -hmm. like i would i would if you feel like your body fits the backhand better do the backhand first get used to that and then go back to the forehand eventually and try to pick it up just for those really short. I got to do something yeah. in case of emergency break glass. Yeah. And I, I love stuff. your advice about uh, working on approach shots with the, with the forehand. I'm definitely going to try that out here in the next few weeks. Cause again, yeah. it's less intimidating. Yeah. I love it. Well, we'll get this PA five in the mail and episode 100. We're going to try to do like a big live, like everyone comes back on, try to get as many guests packed into that time as possible. Would you be willing to come back on and let uh, us know how it flies for you? I would love to. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Come on. Well, Elisha, we appreciate you coming on and uh, we look forward to seeing you a couple in a couple of weeks, I guess. Thank you guys. Another well, one. It's, it's a that long episode. Be. Yeah. Like when it we know that long, it didn't seem long, but that's the thing. Yeah. As I like, I looked down and I realized, Oh, this is gone for like an hour. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Uh, and that's the beauty of when you come on, like if, if you want to talk Frisbees, let's talk, we would love to have you as a guest because mm -hmm. the tangents, the, the side combos, the talking about the art, I mean, it's, it's all worth it and all so fun. So we are, I, as the extrovert, I love getting to meet new people all the time and just know that there's something that you're going to have in your bag that is going to inspire someone listening to the show, yeah. things like that. So it's always worth it. Uh, Brad, I'm that PA five. I'm telling you, I got to throw one eventually because I, I don't know that it has a slot in my bag just because of how my bag set up. Mm hmm. But I want to throw one just to like experience it because it sounds like a really fun disc to throw mm -hmm. with just how understable it is. Yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. I think, like I said, I think you would really like it. So uh, you definitely need to throw one. Have you gotten to throw a Rolo yet? Yeah, just arbitrarily. I've not really like tried to really throw okay. it, if that makes sense. I threw one like someone's like, oh, hey, here's a Rolo. Try it. And I threw it one time. 
Yeah, I don't think it's as understable as a Rolo, but my under, but, but what I have that PA five for in my mind mm. is that it is a more usable, slower Rolo. Like if, with someone I, with power, I, I you're going to throw it and it's going to turn. Mm-hmm. With in, with decent power, it's going to turn every single time. Oh, you're you're. This is going to turn every time for you for sure. Yeah. Uh so we got, but we have PA fives. Brad, what else do we have that's new in the warehouse? All right, so. It's funny because this is a week where things have gotten rescheduled, which doesn't happen a lot. Oh. So I'll tease it. I'll tease it now. Ooh, ooh, so ooh. It was going to happen this Friday, but next Friday, we've got podcast stamped discs releasing. So we're mm. going to have Grip Locked. We're going to have Tour Life and In the Bag. We're going to yes, have some In sir. the Bag. Finally, In the Bag stamped discs. It's um, good, and it's going in the bag. Yeah, for sure. So they, and I guess... I'm not gonna tell you exactly what they are yet, but um, sorry, I, I'm watching like the Waco's on Silas's uh, computer here. So I got very dis, dis uh, Chantel just oh she just missed the putt, so Ooh. I was like rooting for it. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, they're they're discs that are in mine and Robbie's bag. Mm-hmm. Maybe both of us, maybe one of us has, but we both have one of we the both have one of in them the bag, in the bag. There are two molds. So we'll see how you like it. Hope everybody loves them, and I'm very excited about them. So that's next week. But this week, we do have a very special guest coming on the uh, In the Bag, What's in the Warehouse drop list, which is Bear Bite. If you're familiar with yeah. Mr. Jesse over at Bear Bite Disc Golf, we did a collab run Jesse with Jesse Coffee. Yep. Hey, Jesse, what's up? Um, so he has some white, all-white Hades with the Bear Bite logo on the top, the Hades logo bottom stamp. They look clean. They look great. Very excited about them. Though we have very few of them, so if you're interested in those, Grow, go grab them support jesse and hey if it goes well we might do some more stuff with him so make sure you check that out uh also we have a bunch of clash going back up everybody clash is back in the house is back in the warehouse um let's go i, got, I finally got my hand on some hardy butters robbie and boom hey, i'm like sinking them that was the what butter I was boy is dialed but, yeah the softy are okay but uh i was doing well with those but hardy boom that that's that's the way to go that's money so uh, literally entire clash restock. So just check out on Friday what's up. Um, I don't know if they're going to get up. Uh, well, one other thing, Kratos, they drop Friday. We have extra Kratos. So if you didn't get your hand on the proto Kratos, then now's your time. They'll be up uh, live at 5 o'clock on Friday. And um, if they get in the warehouse in time, I'm a little short staff. Uh, Nathan and Jason are headed down your way, Robbie. So uh, it's going to be me. Kimberly's back in the house putting up some discs, which is I love nice. And... Uh, you know, uh, Christian's helping, but I'm going to try to get the recycled plastic disc craft up. Those should be in today, which is Thursday afternoon. So maybe a struggle, but maybe we'll try to get a few molds and recycled plastic up this week. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm kind of excited. I felt some of them, some of that plastic feels really good. Um, you know, very G starry, would you say? Yeah, like yeah, a little very, gummy? Yeah, definitely gummy. Um, so I'm excited to see, like, we got some test runs in that some felt really good, some felt okay. Mm. I'm sure they've perfected them at this point. So I'm excited to see the stock runs now that they're out. Um, so those are some of those will possibly be dropping. We got the rest of the DGA restock is finally all up. Uh, we got some Prodigy, Distortion, Shadow Facts, Reverb, um, and the Strider. So a lot of the signature discs are back up for Prodigy. Um, and hey, if you're not signed up for the text deals, we had $9 uh, PA3s, the NHL collapse this week. <laughs> So make sure you sign up in the, for our text deals. A lot of new stuff happening. And again, more stuff uh, happening every week. We have new lo- uh, new drops happening next week. So make sure you check all those out. And, uh, you know, hey, there's also uh, uh, no trilogy being dropped this week. So, no trilogy uh, being dropped. But subscription boxes, make sure. Yes. Uh, I've got a video I actually filmed with our... Uh, Sci guy and I, let me tell you, are on the ball on content mm-hmm. creation right mm-hmm. now. I shot videos this week, Brad. Uh, found my foundation subscription box video. I shot it on Monday, and it is coming out on the twenty sixth of this month. Dang, that is how far ahead your boys are cooking over here. That's awesome. So, um, but I shot it with the five year subscription box. This month's box, I'm so stoked for because it is themed around something that I wish more people who are upset with their game were willing to do. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think this box is going to be one of the most helpful boxes that we've ever had. For sure. 
and it had a last minute collab for the swag item that is Ooh. just I saw a picture of them they're on their way today and this might be the craziest swag item of all time wow um, so wow. very excited we had something else planned and last second boom something else come up and we we jumped on it this other disc golf creator if you will um not creator they're not creators company uh jumped in did something super quick for us huge like fast turnaround i'm very excited about it so and hey by the way the con man sean man that came in one of the boxes this at yeah. the beginning of the year we're always doing one of them is going to be custom stamped for sure Two of them might be three of them might be you always get three discs and a swag item last month you got four discs and a swag item that's what i was we gonna say when you say craziest swag item it's like last month the swag item was basically also an extra disc so yeah. that's that's a tough one to top yeah so it's it's you know i spend a lot of my time ordering creating planning these boxes and i want them to be like just as the kids say fire every time that you open the box and you're just you're ready to go out to the mailbox you're ready to like open up and be like oh sweet my foundation subscription box is here I hope everything's good because I'm putting it right in the bag. So Bye. we will see you all next week. And hey, bingo card players, I hope you only had to take a few drinks. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. See, see y'all next episode.